गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू दी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग सेशन फॉर बेसिक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स कोर्स ऑफ एन पी टी ई एल टाइटल एन ओ सी ट्वेंटी थ्री ई ई सिक्सटी टू दिस इज द वीक ट्वेल्व एंड द लास्ट वीक फॉर दिस कोर्स टू डेज अप्रिल ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड माई नेम इज अमित आई एम अ पी एच डी स्कॉलर एट आई एस सी बैंगलोर ओवर द पास्ट ऑफ ट्वेल्व वीक्स वी हैव बिन डिस्कसिंग सम प्रॉब्लम रिलेटेड टू दिस कोर्स बेसिक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इन फॉर स्टार्टिंग सेशन वन वी हैव टॉक्ट अबाउट हेमिन नॉट एन इक्वेलेंट्स एंड नोट एन एनालिसिस यूजिंग सुपर पोजिशन थियोरम एंड वी ऑल्सो लुक डेट अबिट फेजस फेजस नथिंग बट दी सैनोसाइडल स्टडी स्टेट ऑफ वोल्टेजेस एंड करंट्स देन वी मूव डॉन एंड वी लुक डेट सम ट्रांसियट्स आर सी ट्रांसियंस एंड आर एल ट्रांसियंस एंड वी ऑल्सो सो हाउ डज चेंजिंग दी पोजिशन ऑफ अ स्विच इम्पैक्ट दी ट्रांसियंस then we move to semiconductor devices uh, firstly diode in which we saw some diode based circuits namely peak detector clamper and clipper and so on and then in the session 4 we saw one more uh, one important application of diode that is half wave rectifier finally we moved on to bjts uh, that is bipolar junction transistors in that we saw the dc biasing of the bjt transistor then we saw common emitter uh, the topology of common emitter amplifier and then the ac small signal models namely habit pi and the t model finally one application of bjt amplifier in the form of a push pull amplifier then we moved on uh, to to operational amplifiers in that in the session we talked about some ideal operational amplifier circuits these are primarily based on negative feedback and we saw how how we can implement uh, uh, adder subtractor and, and and such circuits and in the session 7 we saw some non idealities in operational amplifier in the sense that uh, resistances are not always uh, they have some tolerance band and and uh, some non idealities of the operational amplifier itself uh, to speak a bit about offset voltage and offset bias uh, sorry offset bias and offset current finally we saw one important application of op uh, of operational amplifiers in the form of a difference amplifier this is a negative feedback circuit then then we saw one more important application of uh, in the session 8 we saw precision amplifier which which includes uh, which also includes diode in the design of a operational amplifier circuit then we saw some applications uh, which is one of the most commonly used is that is operational amplifier as a filter in the course of that we saw uh, we saw the transfer function which is nothing but the 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 output voltage the ratio of output and input voltage in frequency domain and we also saw that how we can plot these transfer functions using magnitude bode plot and phase bode plot in session 9 we had talked about positive feedback circuits of operation amplifier uh, which are oscillator circuits and one the most prominent uh, application is the schmidt trigger Uh, for session 10 and 11 we had moved on to uh, digital electronics session 10 was about um, combinator combinational circuits um, where we solved problems using boolean algebra truth table and k maps and session 11 we had talked about sequential circuits in that we talked about first some memory devices like sr latch and jk flip flops and d flip flops and then we saw their applications in the form of counters and how uh, and then we saw that how how the counters change their states depending on the specific their topology and the specific signals that are being provided to the inputs so now um, going ahead in today's session we'll be talking primarily about the, uh, the analog to digital conversion and digital to analog conversion which is which is uh, which is uh, which is uh, often uh, we see in the in, in even around us real life real life applications all right so let's get started so uh, the first problem for today uh, asks us that a 10 bit dac a 10 bit dac gives an output of va equal to 2.5 volts for input this 0100000000 what is the resolution we have been given four questions and we are required to find the correct answer so so the key things here that we need to first talk about is the first term this what is a dac how does it work and second is what do we mean by resolution of a dac right so so let's uh, so let's just see what a dac actually is so this is this is the schematic of a dac so dac means digital to analog so on the input side you have some n bit digital input and we'll get an analog output so in this case we are interested in voltages and it and we provided a reference voltage and a ground uh, to evaluate the uh, essentially that will determine the analog output right so so let's just see that what is the second term resolution mean right so if we have a digital input and an analog output right so this means that for digital input you have some minimum input like an maximum input and there will be corresponding mapping of maximum output and minimum output this is right side is analog left side is digital what do i mean by that so minimum input can be zero we are not talking about negative numbers here so minimum digital input can be zero and if it's n bit digital input the maximum number in in decimal if you if you write it it will be 2 to 2 raised to the power n minus 1 right similarly 
on the output side the minimum input you have some analog voltage v min and an analog voltage v max so the difference would be v max minus v min similarly on the digital side uh, the difference will be uh, 2 raised to the power n minus 1 no, no that this is just a mapping that you are doing right we are not we are not amplifying it we are not attenuating it so essentially 2 raised to the power n minus 1 must be equal to v max minus v min this is a one to one mapping this is a direct mapping so this must hold true correct now let's define what do you mean by resolution so resolution is the minimum value that can be distinctly measured so this resolution is a fairly common term in physics and engineering so for instance when we talk about uh, uh, resolution of a human eye that means uh, how if two objects are very close together what is the minimum distance that a human eye can distinctly say that these two objects have this much gap so that's a resolution optical microscope has a resolution so this term keeps on appearing so resolution formally means minimum value that can be distinctly measured by by a device or any or entity that 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 is being employed okay so in that sense what it means in this domain is that that means a one bit change right and that to lsp so for instance let's say it's it's a it's an n bit so let's say the the last four digits are 0 1 0 0 right so immediately the next number will be digital it will be 0 1 0 1 so note that there is only a one bit change that two of lsp right that's what it means so between green between green and purple the corresponding change will be here also in voltage right so we call it v1 we call it v2 so whatever the change is here in digital domain the same will be mapped in analog analog output right so what so that's what whatever the minimum change that we can provide we can the pro minimum change that we can provide here is just one bit that the change of lsp that will be reflected in this between v1 and v2 so v2 minus v1 is essentially your resolution okay corresponding to the lsb change in the digital input okay so uh, so and we know that 2 raised to the power n minus 1 steps so this steps are 2 raised to the power n minus 1 this is equal to v max minus v min we already established that now using unitary method we can simply say one step is nothing but v max minus v min over 2 raised to the power n minus 1 and one step in digital domain will map to the minimum resolution in the analog domain right so i can simply say the resolution here will be v max minus v min over 2 raised to the power n minus 1 so that's the resolution that we'll obtain okay uh, right so that's the resolution part but uh, what is it uh, so we'll just quickly look into what a digital to analog converter is how is it implemented actually so in the first slide you saw we, we saw just a block diagram there are n inputs and and then there is an analog output right so this is usually implemented using an operational amplifier using negative feedback mode so you can see and this is a summer we also call it a summer circuit because this adds up all these four how do we know that you see no note remember virtual ground we saw that in negative feedback circuits and uh, uh, we saw that we had seen in the opm uh, opm discussions now these are almost at the same potential right so this and no i assuming ideal amplifier no current will go into this opm what's going to happen is whatever current is going uh, coming through this circuit will directly go to the output and hence i can write ifs i1 plus i2 plus i3 plus i4 now i1 i2 i3 i4 you can determine as v in 4 by r4 v in 3 by r3 and so on so you can write an expression of v out in terms of all the v ins right that's a summer will actually do that that's what a summer uh, op amp circuit does right so that's what happening here and, and, and a more common topology is that because rather than using these different values of resistors we do we do a, a weighted circuit so this means that first is r second is 2r third is 4r and so on because it's a because it, it, it becomes a bit uh, easier because now you will get the denominator so you see what is the denominator that you will get here let's let's just solve it so you will get v out will be equal to minus rf by r4 v in 4 minus rf by r3 v in 3 you will get after solving this right if i1 is nothing but v in 4 by r4 so you put all those values here and you will you will simply get this expression so rf by r2 v in 2 and minus rf by r1 v in 1 so you'll get this expression but this this doesn't look like a, a, a typical form that we are used to seeing you can see what these this is adding up right but if you put like r4 equal to r and so on if you put that now you'll get you can take the r common out and you'll get a form something like this v out equal to there'll be negative sign of course and you'll get a form like 1 by 2 uh, 2k and v in k summation 
something like that and we, and we'll see what exactly in the, in the lectures also professor patel talks about it right so and we will see how it comes out to be all right okay so uh, so essentially so this is the this is the diagram that we saw earlier right this is what i was talking about so if you say if you, if you again you you assume the virtual ground condition here and uh, again you will see that the current this if will be nothing but i2 plus i1 plus i0 i can write that if will be nothing but i2 plus i1 plus i0 i2 is nothing but v2 by r i1 is nothing but v1 over 2r and this is v v0 over 4r all right and then uh, we will we'll simply say that whatever the current is flowing through here and if i can put as minus v out over r so if you solve this expression you rearrange you take r common you will get this expression right and thus you can see that this is taking out to be some this form now here in this example i have assumed so what are v2 v1 and v0 v2 v1 and v0 and are nothing but corresponding to your digital inputs note that one bit right we are talk the input is a n bit input right so each each of these inputs corresponding to that input and how do we convert an and digital input to a remember we had provided some reference voltage using that we convert these uh, digital inputs to some actual uh, analog values how do we do that so essentially i am just put this value here so you put 0 0 0 here so you can see you can uh, de depending on the value of v2 v1 and v0 you can get some corresponding to this digital value you get this output value okay so that's what i had meant okay that's what i mean so here it's v v0 it can be 0 or 1 or something like that right and these so you can see that this is uh, corresponding values you are getting okay right so but uh, typically what we use is a, is nothing but an r uh, is a weighted um, circuit you can see again the same here this is from the lecture notes by the way so here so you can see that this this side uh, in the previous example this was some definite voltage v0 v1 v2 and v3 that's not the case so a so a0 a1 a2 and a3 are nothing but your inputs right but but we need to convert it right so you can assume that these are two switches so depending on if a3 is high the switch will connect to v3 if a3 is low the switch will connect to ground so hence v0 v1 v2 and v3 are being determined by that and we can and we can change this so output is va you see over here so you can determine you can we can enter we can uh, convert this signal uh, convert this circuit to look something rhs does not change but only on the left hand side so s3 is the one that is changing so s3 is so all your s si's are 0 or 1 okay rather than using the switch so i have implemented switch using this so si will be changed between 0 and 1 accordingly and thus same the output will change okay and what will the output come uh, turn out to be as we have seen in the previous slide this will turn out to be something of a, this expression in that rf was r right so these got cancelled and sk sk is nothing but nothing is what that was your v0 v1 and v2 so we saw this this form in the last slide also right why does vr come in the previous slide vr was zero uh, sorry vr was one remember v0 was zero volts or one volt so vr was one in that case this value was one here it's some generic vr in the previous slide we have talked about some specific values this is the most general expression for more details you can refer to the notes of professor patel okay now so coming back to the problem so we were given that uh, this 10 bit dac has an uh, has a has an output of uh, VA equal to 2.5 volts for this input, right? And uh, so, and we know the resolution expression is Vmax minus Vwin over 2 raised to the power n minus 1, right? So, also, now, in order to determine the resolution, we first need to find out what is Vmax and also what is Vmin. n we know is 10, but we don't know Vmax and we don't know Vmin. So, how do we obtain that? We obtained it using this expression, okay? How do I do that? If all the s I, I make them equal to 1, right, then this v0 will maximize, will get the maximum value. So I'll write for vmax sk should be equal to 1, right, sk should be equal to 1. So when I do that, and we'll assume that RF equal to R for our for our purpose, it, it won't change the results. It'll change. It is a common um, uh, common thing to uh, assume. So RF equal to R. So this gets cancelled. Then I get 
so v max i'll simply get minus v r over 2 raised to the power n minus 1 sigma 0 to n minus 1 note sk is 1 right so i'll get 2 raised to the power k okay and uh, I'll, I'll later put the value of uh, 2 raised to the power uh, sorry n s 10 but for now let's just keep it like this okay so uh, this is a gp uh, if you solve this this if you solve this this will come out to be uh, 2 raised to the power n minus 1 okay 2 raised to the power n minus 1 uh, if you can quickly verify it if let's say n equal to uh, n equal to 2 that means you are integrating from 0 to let's say n equal to 1 you are integrating only the first term so the answer should be 1 right so the answer should come out to 1 yeah so I am correct so this is the expression that we get for v max and similarly for v min put sk equal to 0 if you put sk equal to 0 you can clearly see that v min which is v naught will come out to be 0 so this is the first this is the first and this is the second so v min is coming out to be 0 v max is coming out to be this number all right okay and so let's uh, let's try to solve it that v max was so v max is coming out to be minus v r over 2 raised to the n minus 1 into 2 raised to the power n minus 1 okay so v max uh, uh, okay so uh, okay just give me a second oh okay so we we did not we uh, yeah so for v max we'll from this we will get the value of v r so this implies that we get v r equal to uh, sorry in order to even to e even in order to evaluate evaluate v max we need vr right we need vr so how do we find vr we find vr because we know this expression that v not equal to minus vr rf equal to r so i'm not writing writing that 2 raised to the power n minus 1 sigma 0 to n minus 1 sk 2 raised to the power k now we know that for va equal to 2.5 volts okay so this comes out to be 2.5 when when the the ninth switch so this is uh, so you can see 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 right so so you can you can say that when when the ninth one or uh, sorry the eighth one so this is starts this index is zero and this index is eight right and this index is nine okay so so we can see that it comes out to be when 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 this goes high right when 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 this goes high only then this is one so all other s all other switches are turned off only this is turned on right so this means this will come out to be two raised to the power n minus two because it goes from 0 to n minus 1 and only the second last term which is n minus 2 here or you can see that it goes from 0 to 9 n minus 1 n is 10 0 to 9 so only 8th one will survive right we saw only 8th one will survive all right so this comes out this this tells us 2.5 equal to minus vr by 2 so this gives us vr as minus 5 volts now we know we are at minus 5 volts so let's put this value here okay so this gives us v max equal to this implies so this is the fourth step we obtain now v max equal to minus v r over 2 raised to the power n minus 1 into 2 to the power n minus 1 so this gives us uh, v r is minus 5 so this will turn out to be 5 2 to the power n is 10 so this 2 2 raised to the power 9 2 raised to the power 10 minus 1 okay just let me get my calculator so 2 raised to the power 10 is 1024 so numerator turns out to be 5 into 1023 divided by 512 2 raised to the power 9 is 512 so this comes out to be very close to 10 which is 9.99 volts so this is the vmax and we have already know that vmin was coming out to be um, so vmin is actually not 0 so this is a mistake here uh, wait if, if I put all s as 0 yeah vmin is 0 so vmin is 0 
So now we can say the resolution is Vmax minus Vmin over this. So this gives us as the fifth step resolution Vmax minus Vmin that's 9.99 right minus Vmin divided by 2 raised to the power 10 minus 1. Let's calculate what this number comes out to be. So 9.99 divided by 2 raised to the power 10 is 1024. So this turns out to be approximately 9.765 millivolts. 9.766 actually if I round it off millivolts which happens to be option A. Okay, so that's the correct answer. So just to reiterate what we did is that we know that this is the formula for resolution and n we know is 10 but we don't know v max and v min so how do we obtain that so first we see that if we put or uh, we, we if you remember that diagram in which i had mapped the digital the digital input to the analog outputs in that the we, we will obtain the maximum output when all the switches are closed so when all s is so that's sk equal to 1 for all k for all k and sk equal to 0 for all k okay so this gives us v max as this expression but we don't know vr and v min if you put sk equal to 0 v min is 0 so that's fine but we don't know vr so how do we obtain vr we obtain vr because you are given this information that va is 2.5 for this input so we put the value of uh, for only so this is true this means that only s8 equal to 1 all other si are 0 okay if you put that this this will turn out to be 2 raised to the power n minus 2 and when we solve it so this is not this implies if we solve it we got vr equal to minus 5 volts and rest was just putting the numbers and we obtained the resolution was 9.766 millivolts which is option a okay so that was the resolution part right so now the second question in this uh, uh, in this set asks us for the dac of previous question let the output voltage va1 correspond to this input and VA2 correspond to this input. So now, uh, so now you can see that uh, depending on different inputs, we, we, we know that we'll get different outputs. So the question is, what is VA1 minus VA2? All right. So, uh, so, so this is the problem. And as, as you know, this is, this is the schematic of the DAC and this is the expression that we get, right? This is the expression that we, uh, that we get for, uh, for this DAC okay so now let's do the case one so case one input is equal to 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 okay so now let's let's evaluate what does this expression come out to be so v a 1 will turn out to be so again i'm assuming rf equal to r they get cancelled so this turns out to be minus v r over 2 raised to the power n minus 1 so 2 raised to the power 9 because this is this is like this okay 2 raised to the power n is 10 so 2 raised to the power 9 sigma 0 to n minus 1 sk into 2, 2 raised to the power k now let's see which of the switches are closed so which of the switches are 1 that is so we, we see um, so i can write it as minus v r over 2 raised to the power 9 okay so we see uh, the the this zeroth switch is closed all right so we'll get 0 times 2 raised to the power 0 plus 0 times 2 raised to the power 1 when k is 1 so that is this is k equal to 0 k equal to 1 so k equal to 2 we'll get 1 so 1 into 2 raised to the power 2 right plus 1 into 2 raised to the power 3 corresponding to this plus 1 into 2 raised to the power 4 so we'll get this and then 0 2 raised to the power 5 0 2 raised to the power 6 1 2 raised to the power 7 and finally 1 2 raised to the power 8 and finally 0 2 raised to the power 9 so this is the expression that we get i have no done nothing but expanded this this summation okay and if if we recall vr was minus 5 right so i let's put v over 2 raised to the power 9 and this thing comes out to be so you see it will come out to be 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 2 raised to the power 7 is uh, I think 128 and plus 256 okay yeah so uh, this will come out to be uh, this is 2 this is 4 8 
16 uh, 32 64 128 into 56 yeah so this will come out to be if i if i calculate this this will come out to be five times uh, let me use my calculator so 256 uh, 256 plus 128 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 that is 412 times 5 that's 2060 so it turns out to be uh, let me delete this so it turns out to be 2060 over 2 raised to the power 9 volts I am not solving this because we are required to find the difference and then only we will do we will find the difference so case 2 when input is 0 1 1 0 so again so we will write the same expression minus v r over 2 raised to the power 9 the same expression sigma and minus 1 sk into 2 raised to the power k now again we'll do the same thing so vr is minus 5 so this turns out to be 5 over 2 raised to the power 9 and now again we'll write that so 0 into 2 raised to the power 0 plus 0 into 2 raised to the power 1 this one 2 raised to the power 1 then again 0 2 raised to the power 2 plus 1 times 2 raised to the power 3 plus 0 times 2 raised to the power 4 0 times 2 raised to the power 5 0 times 2 raised to the power 6 yeah 4 5 6 1 times 2 raised to the power 7 and finally 1 times 2 raised to the power 8 and 0 times 2 raised to the power 9 so this will come out to be 5 over 2 raised to the power 9 uh, this will turn out to be uh, so 2 4 8 8 plus 16 32 64 128 plus 256 so this evaluates to uh, 256 plus 128 plus 8 into 5 that's 1960 okay so that turns out to be 1960 divided by 2 raised to the power 9 okay 1960 divided by 2 raised to the power 9 so we are required to find va1 minus va2 so i can write pa1 minus va2 so va1 was 2060 by 2 raised to the power 9 minus 1960 by 2 raised to the power 9 that turns out to be 1000 over 2 raised to the power 9 right so uh, let's try to solve this so 1000 over 2 raised to the power 9 is 512 so it's coming out to be sorry not 1000 100 my bad it's 100 100 over 2 raised to the power 9 is coming out to be 0.1953 0.1953 volts the units are volt both of these were in volt so we see it matches option d yeah so we see that so uh, so how did we do this so for the first input we obtained the output using this expression rf equal to r remember that so i'll write it let rf equal to r so it gets cancelled okay and we saw that which of the switches are on so we saw that these three and so total five switches are on so this is corresponding to k equal to zero lsb is k equal to zero and fsb is k equal to nine so we saw all that and we see the output was 2060 over 2 raised to the power 9 similarly for this it was 1960 over 2 raised to the power 9 and when you solve this uh, you deduct these numbers and you get uh, so this is also in volts okay right so we get 0.1953 so there is there is actually another way and simpler way of doing it so what we do is that we, we just see what is the digital difference okay so what do i mean by that we have to subtract uh, va1 minus va2 in digital domain itself okay so if so uh, if you so i'll tell you what do i mean so i'll write va1 as this is alternate approach i'll use a different color alternate approach so i'll write va1 and i'll write va2 so va1 is 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 va2 is 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 and their difference va1 minus va2 would be 0 0 1 0 1 
zero 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 zero, right? So you get this as the difference. Okay. Now again, you can use the same formula in the like like we had used for the previous slide. Uh, in the previous slide, that's the return for the output, right? So if you use that, so we call it delta v. So delta v, you can see that it's coming out to be minus v r over two raised to the power nine, and only these two are high. So this means this corresponds to one times two raised to the power two, or two and four, yeah, eight and sixteen. One times two raised to the power four. If I am not mistaken, let me just be clear that I am doing it correctly. One zero zero one 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 zero zero. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I think this is correct. So this turns out to be four. And. Hmm. And the second term is this is high, right? Four, eight, and sixteen. So this turns out to be minus V R over two raised to the power nine into sixteen. Uh, sorry, twenty. Six. Uh, two raised to the four is sixteen plus four. So this turns out to be twenty. Write it again. Into twenty, and you know V R is minus five. This turns out to be hundred over two raised to the power nine. This is the same as this. Okay, so this also turns out to be point one nine five volts. So you can use uh, any approach what you want. So here what we did, I just reduced in the digital domain, the difference in digital domain itself. Okay, now moving forward, again a very straightforward question for the DAC of question. Wait, for the DAC of question four, what is the V A corresponding to this? This is the formula that we have. So again, we'll just directly put that V naught. Again, I'll assume R F equal to R. So V naught will now turn out to be. Minus V R over two raised to the power ten minus one. Now, which of which of them are high? We'll have to see that. Okay. So you see. Uh, so I'll write zero into two raised to the power zero plus one into two raised to the power one plus one into two raised to the power two zero into two raised to the power three zero into two raised to the power four. This is one two three four one into two five one into two six zero into two seven. Zero into two eight plus one into two raised to the power nine. All right. So let's do that. V R is minus five, and this is two raised to the power nine. So let's evaluate. Will this come out to be? This will come out to be two plus four. Eight sixteen. Will not there thirty two plus sixty four. One twenty eight will not be there. Two fifty six will not be there. There will be five twelve. Okay, so this will turn out to be then five twelve plus sixty four plus thirty two plus four plus two into five. That's three zero seven zero. So three zero seven zero over two raised to the power nine volts divided by two raised to the power nine. So this turns out to be five point nine nine six volts. Five point nine nine six volts, which is our option C over here. So it's a very straightforward problem because we know the value of V R. We have assumed again R F equal to R. I'll write it again. Assume R F equal to R. You do that, and you get just put in the values. So whatever switches are on, we just put those switches as one. Rest as zero, and you'll get 5.996, very close to six volts. Okay. All right. So. Um, This is the same. This is a similar problem. Uh, notice that how do we implement DAC? We have already talked about it, right? So there is an alternate way of implementing DAC is using the R to R ladder. Note that in previous example, there were the resistors were first was R, second was two R, four R, eight R. So it was increasing. This means that we had to use different resistors. Uh, that is resistors of different values, right? So it's uh, so that means uh, you need to on your on your uh, when you when you are actually uh, uh, either on breadboard or an integrated chip when you are making that it's difficult so it's better to use it's much easier to use resistors which have similar values so 2R and R so this is R 2R net ladder network okay the principal ring is the same we have seen in this diagram previously also right so A3 when when A3 is on this will be routed through VR so this will be the pathway. When when A3 is off, so you can see that. So this this will be the pathway for this. Okay, so that's what it says. 
node AK gets connected to OPAM virtual ground. So again, this OPAM, the virtual ground remains the same, right? Will will connect it to virtual ground if SK equal to one, right? Else it gets connected to real ground. Okay, so AK will connect to this. This means this is the pathway. Otherwise, this is the pathway. Okay, so this means this will not play any role. This is open circuit from here. So now we are required to find the output for one zero zero one. All right. So uh, okay, sorry about that. So we are required to find the output for when the input is one zero zero one. Okay. So input has been given to us as one zero zero one here. This is A three. This is A naught. This is LSP. All right. Sorry about that. So so this means that this is closed, right? So this means this is the pathway. This is closed. Here it's like this. Again like this, and like this. So what's going to happen if you see that this branch is useless because it's the current will flow between VR and ground, so it did not play a role in any amplification. Correct. So this branch is of no use to us. And similarly for this branch. Okay. Again, this is the virtual ground thing. And uh, right. So this is the expression again. So you can use. You can. There were different ways of interpreting it. That's what I mean to say. All right. So uh, so this is the expression that uh, that we know. Okay. So let's now do that again. So here R F is two R. You see this. So now I'll write V naught is minus V R two R the value of n is four there are four bits here so two raised to the power four minus one times R sigma zero two the value of n is four four minus one S K two raised to the K okay this turns out to be minus V R so R and R gets cancelled this is two over eight right so minus V R by four 0 to 3 sk 2k so i'll simplify it further so we know that only s0 and s3 they are one so it will be 1 times 2 raised to the power 0 0 times 2 raised to the power 1 0 times 2 raised to the power 2 and 1 times 2 raised to the power 3 so if i solve it here we are by 4 1 plus 8 so minus we are into 9 by 4 okay minus we are into 9 by 4 so 9 by 4 is uh, just a second it says 1001 AK gets connected to virtual ground if SK equal to 1 yeah so I did that correctly so 1001 All right, uh, just a second. Zero two four eight. So, so it should come out to be. This is question number eight. Did I make a mistake somewhere? Just give me a minute. Minus V R R F is two R two raised to the power n minus one n is one two three four four R so two raised to the power three it's eight so it's V R by four it's nine by four this is not coming out to be minus two point two five V R mm, which is not an option here. Uh, just give me a minute. Uh, so this will turn out to be two, two plus four six. So six by four. So ninth should be B. Okay, so there's a difference somewhere. Uh, let let me just try to solve this completely. Maybe this formula is for a different expression. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll, I'll try to solve this uh, in the entirety. That means we'll use that OPAM. So whatever the current IF is coming, which is the sum of all these four branches. 
okay so in this case if will be nothing but i3 it will be nothing but i3 uh, plus i0 okay so if so if i want to uh, obtain i3 then you'll have to apply the 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 thevenin uh, so it will be uh, 2r and then it will be r it will be 2r and then r 2r so it will be by r so it will be i3 will be vr by just a second r uh, i3 will be a second sorry about this so if the switch is thrown all all others are closed so it is like this so 2r is in parallel with 2r so r and r will become 2r and 2r and 2r will become r, r and r will become 2r again and then 2r and 2r in parallel will become r again r and r will become 2r again so this is from 2R so it will be VR by 2R actually because only this current will matter if this this is VR and the current that's going from this this current is I3 and this current is I0 Because whatever current is flowing, it, it doesn't matter. So the the only currents that matter are this, 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 and this. So I three plus I zero. So it will be V R by two R. All right. Yeah, that's correct. So in the in the second scenario, when when uh, when 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 we close it here, so we are, so essentially we are finding Thevenin equivalent for this fellow. Okay. So this will turn out to be I zero by. Uh, so this means we are required to find the current flowing through here right so this is so uh, this will become so we'll kill all the uh, independent sources so if it, this is 2r then this will become uh, 2 4 8 16 so this will become i know sorry this sorry this will become vr by 2 raised to the power 4r because it will increase this will this will be two squared, two cubed, and two raised to the power four. All right, and now if we put I F and uh, so this from this from this we R F into I F. This is I F that I'm talking about this current, and if I put this here, this will be. Uh, we'll uh, put this expression here. So this is minus V R. Okay, so minus V R, and uh, R F is two R. 1 over 2r plus 1 over 2 raised to the power 4r so this will be minus vr 1 plus 1 over 8 minus vr into 9 by 8 yeah so this is turning out to be minus 1.125 times vr so uh, actually so uh, apologies about this this is a formula for 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 a different um, uh, setting so to speak okay so uh, hence the difference of two was coming okay so 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 this this analysis is not correct i'll remove this this analysis is not correct so there's a because there's a factor of two that is missing in this This is from that. Uh, uh, this is from some. This is a similar circuit, but slightly different. So this expression is not used here. This is not used here. Okay. So a minus one point one two five VR, which is our option C over here. Okay. Now let's quickly do this. Uh, this similar problem. In this case, we are given zero one one zero as the input. So again, zero one one zero. Zero one one zero. This means this is a3 and this is a0 so a0 is 0 this means it's connected to ground like this a1 is connected like this a2 is connected like this and again a3 is 0 so it's connected like this okay so as you can see a3 and a0 will not contribute because there's no current this is virtual gate no current will flow here 
so i3 will be 0 similarly i0 will be 0 but there will be a current i1 and there will be a current i2 and let's again call this current if all right so from our operational amplifier we know that v out is nothing but minus rf over r sorry minus rf into if the current flowing through here and if we know is nothing but in this case it's actually in every case is i0 plus i1 plus i2 plus i3 and we know that uh, 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 i3 and i0 are 0 so this will become i1 plus i2 right and so this is 2r and i1 i1 is current flowing through here and we saw that here the factor is 2r becomes 4r and then and uh, and then 8r for i1 okay so it will become vr over 8r and for i2 it will become vr over 4r from where i am getting these expressions uh, i i requested to refer to professor spartel's lecture notes so you will come that y comes it's 2r here and why is it 4r and 8r and 16r it, it's very well explained there due to the uh, in the interest of time i'm skipping that so we'll take minus vr common um, so 2r over r if you multiply it inside it will be 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 right 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 that's 0 0.25 plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.75 times vr so i'm getting minus 0 0.75 times vr which is uh, so ignore that formula so minus 0 0.7 time 0 0.75 times vr sorry and that happens to be option b right so ninth is option b yeah ninth is option b so very straightforward problem okay so what do we have here six bit weighted resistor dac what is this weighted resistor dac this essentially okay r5 correspond to msv so there are five bits so so what do we uh, so it's sim it's simple to understand six bits sorry so so there is s5 s4 and then s1 and s0 so this is our msv that's what that's why that's the way that we have been writing it right so r5 correspond to the msv s5 okay okay and so there is a resistance thevenin resistance is corresponding to this which is r5 and for s0 it is r0 so we are required to find is the ratio of r5 over r0 so what is a weighted resistor dac this is a weighted resistor dac again this is from the lecture notes itself okay uh, yeah so uh, so why weighted resistor you can see that the weight is increasing twice for every this is not r to r letter you can see 2r and then 4r and then 8r okay so we can see that in, in in the first leg for the msb the weight is r correct for the second leg weight becomes 2r third leg weight becomes 4r fourth leg weight becomes 8r so if there was fifth leg right this means it would have become 16 r correct so 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 that so th that's how it's going to operate okay because it's increasing in the so every every for every bit that that's added the resistor gets doubled okay so so since now it's happening is so what do we mean by that so for r0 you can say it's 2 to the power 0 times r r is some the the reference then R1 is 2 raised to the power 1 times R. Similarly, R5 corresponding to the uh, corresponding to the MSB, it will turn out to be 2 raised to the power 5 times R. Okay, because you can see 0, 0, 1, 1 and then 5, 5. We are required to find R5 over R0. So that's 2 raised to the power 5 into R over 2 raised to the power 0 into R. So this power 0 is 1. So that turns out to be 32. So 11th answer is P. So the key thing here is that you just need to know what's a weighted resistor DAC. In this, the the for 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 every uh, as as you uh, as you go towards uh, least uh, lower significant bits, it doubles. So MSB has R. Then if you go to the uh, the uh, and a bit uh, to the right of it, it will become two R and then so on. And finally, LSB will have the highest weight. It's going to turns out to be thirty two. Okay. And then this is the 32 because this comes in denominator. Remember the currents are V by I. Hence, this is the contributing the least weight. Okay. Which makes sense because MSB should contribute the highest weight, which is 
the same thing happening in analog domain in, in terms of resistors okay uh, yeah let me just make it clear it's r0 this is r0 okay right so uh, the question is in the dac of question 11 rf equal to r and vr equal to minus 5 so these rf equal to r vr equal to minus 5 all resistances are exactly equal to the nominal values okay what is the output voltage for this expression so what we know is that uh, that we are we we have been given um, these sets of inputs and we are given this value we are just required to find the output voltage and we know that we know the formula for this so this is the formula okay and this is the formula this this was the formula that in the we have been seeing this for for a weighted resistor for a weighted resistor socket okay and rf equal to r so but let me just first write the input what is the input input is one zero zero one one zero one zero zero one zero zero right yeah okay so this is s5 this is s0 okay so let's just uh, let's just put these values here this is minus vr vr is also given yeah minus 5 okay we'll put that later let's put this expression rf 2 raised to the power the number of bits are 6 in this problem n equal to 6 rf equal to r and vr is minus 5 volts okay so 2 raised to the power uh, n is 6 6 minus 1 r sigma 0 to 6 minus 1 sk times 2 raised to the power k vr is minus 5 this becomes 5 rf equal to r this gets cancelled this turns out to be 2 raised to the power 6 minus 5 6 minus 1 is 5 sigma 0 to 5 sk 2 raised to the power k now we are just required to we'll do this 5 over 32 right which ones are 1 so 0 times 2 raised to the power 0 0 times 2 raised to the power 1 1 times 2 raised to the power 2 0 times 2 raised to the power 3 I am using this 1 0 0 1 0 0 and then 0 times 2 raised to the power 4 1 2 3 4 5 so and plus 1 times 2 raised to the power 5 which should be the highest yeah so solving this further here this turns out to be 5 by 32 4 plus 8 uh, 8 will not come 16 and 32 so it turns out to be 5 times 36 over 32 so that's 180 over 32 180 over 32 which is 5.625 volts 5.625 volts so we have an option yeah 12th answer should be d it is d okay so what uh, so let me just summarize what we had done in this problem is uh, we were given uh, these values and for this input we are required to find the value of output a straightforward problem and we already knew the expression for this weighted resistor circuit for weighted resistor dac sorry this is the expression and we just put simply put in the values and this was the input that was given to us uh, so s0 was 0 and s5 was 1 put these values here we got our answer all right okay We're moving forward now so in the next problem it says that in the dac of question 12 that's the previous problem suppose all resistors have a two percent tolerance what is the maximum output voltage for this okay so this is the same as previous one zero zero one zero zero now the only difference is is that now we have a two percent tolerance and so the voltage may not be the same let's see how, by how much it differs okay so this is uh, this is the, and this is the expression so again i'll write input as one zero zero one zero zero okay this corresponds to s5 this corresponds to s0 okay so now it says we have a two percent tolerance and we are required to uh, so we we obtained that v out was 5.625 volts right so now we want to and and this is without tolerance okay this is without tolerance now we are required to find what is the v out with tolerance so we'll write v out um, let, let's call this as
V naught. Let's call this as V naught superscript two percent. Okay. So how will it differ? That's the problem. So you see in this expression, we want to maximize. We want to find the maximum limit for the with two percent tolerance. So this means if we increase this by two percent and we reduce this by two percent, the new V naught will be maximized. Okay. So this is given. will be maximized when rf changes to rf plus 2% and r changes to r minus 2% okay so and then i'm solving this here so v not 2% will turn out to be everything else will remain the same Please understand that only that this term will be rise by two and this will fall by two. So this this will be v naught the old one into one point zero two. I'll be more clear with this. One plus point zero two because we have increased that divide by one minus point zero two. So this will be v naught is the old one five point six to five. Times one point zero two over point nine nine eight. Five point six to one point zero two divided by point nine nine eight. This is five point seven four nine volts. Five point seven four nine volts. Um, wait a second. Where did I made a mistake? Oh, it's one not point nine nine eight. It's point nine eight. Sorry about that. So it's point nine eight. So this will turn out to be five point six two five into one point zero two by point nine eight. Five point eight five five. Five point eight five five, which is option C. Thirteenth is C. That's correct. So what did we have here? This is the this, we had already solved for this input. What is the output voltage, analog voltage? But this time we had since we had two percent tolerances and we wanted to maximize the output voltage, we increase the RF by two percent. This is written here, and we decrease R by two percent. So one plus point zero two, one minus one zero two. Answer is five point eight five five. Now in this case, uh, again same problem. This this time, again two percent tolerance, minimum output voltage. Okay, so let's find that again. So this is the and this is the expression again. The input is one zero zero one zero zero. This is corresponding to S zero. This is corresponding to S five. Again, we have two percent tolerance. And so V naught was five point six two five volts. This is without tolerance, right? And again, so V minus two percent. Let's denote it by this. So um, this will be minimized. When will it minimize? When R F goes down and R goes up, will be minimized. When R F goes to R F minus two percent and R goes to R plus two percent. Okay, so let's do that here. V naught minus two percent will be. Uh, uh, will be V naught times one minus point zero two divided by one plus point zero two because remember R F equal to R they got cancelled earlier but this time they will not cancel in place of R F we we so you can see it like this R F by R these get cancelled this these terms remain so this turns out to be five point six two five point nine eight by one point zero two so five point six two five times Point nine eight divided by one point zero two, five point four zero four, five point four zero four volts, which is option A. So that completes this problem. Similar problem, just in this case, we are required to find the minimum voltage. Okay, so this completes the the DAC part, uh, digital to analog. Now uh, the counterpart uh, to this uh, uh, this this uh, converter is 
analog to digital so you are given some analog signals and you want to see the digital output because uh, very often we store our data in terms of in some in some memories in in you know in jk flip flops in terms of zeros and ones but the but most of the things around us as we perceive uh, temperature sound these are these are not digital these are analog right so how do we store them for them we need something called an adc okay so analog to digital converter okay so this is the first problem related to that the full scale input for an adc is 10 volts now we'll see what do we mean by full scale input the minimum resolution required is 5 millivolts so resolution is given to us what is the minimum number of bits required for this adc if you remember for dac also uh, we had calculated resolution the similar uh, similar in fact the same analysis holds true for this okay so we are given the digital output sorry uh, digital input this this time analog is input so 10 volts the resolution is 5 millivolts we are required to find the number of bits so let's do that so analog to digital conversion so you have a, again an analog input on the left side and this uh, i'm just taking a simple example of a 3 bit adc and the digital is the digital output is naturally 3 bits okay and so what do we what do we mean by that here is this Three bits. You can know. You know that the three bits maximum it can be for eight eight states. So state rising from zero 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 to one one one. So one 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 will correspond to the maximum maximum value over here. Zero will correspond to the analog value. Zero will correspond to the minimum value of zero 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 over here. Right. And anything which so 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 you see that. So if anything comes in between them. So for instance. Let's say some analog value writes here. So these are some different references. We are seven. We are six. We are five. We are four. Three, two, one. Okay. These are some references. All right. So anything. So in order to achieve a value of let's say zero zero one, the analog input has to rise to at least above V R one. means we have to convert we have to compare whatever the input is in this case it's va prime so we'll compare the va prime with these reference voltages these seven there should be eight eighth one is zero okay there is actually an eighth one which is zero all right so we compare the analog uh, the input that we required to find the digital counterpart for we compare with these seven uh, these seven references Whichever one it's, whichever one it crosses, it's that value. So in this case, V A prime crosses this reference, V R four. Hence, the value will be one zero zero. If let's say there is some other input, V A double prime, which writes over here. So it crosses V A V R six. It is not cross V R seven. So V A prime will be corresponding, will be stored as one one zero. Okay. So that's that's how we convert this analog value to a digital value. Okay. So that that's the basic of analog to digital conversion. right what's the resolution here again we have analog input and digital output so as we, we saw earlier minimum input and maximum input corresponding there will be minimum output and maximum output right so minimum so v min and v max the difference is v max minus v min on the on the output side minimum output is zero and maximum output in decimal terms we can say is 2 to the power n minus 1 uh, uh, i am assuming here it's an n bit okay But this is just a mapping. I'm not creating anything new. So v max minus v min should be equal to two raised to the power n minus one. Okay. But it's a resolution. Resolution is the minimum value that can be distinctly measured. Okay. What is what does that mean here? So one bit change. So let's say these are some numbers, and let's say one zero zero zero, right? Only when LSB changes one step, one zero zero one. None of the other bits changed. Only the LSB changes from zero to one. Then you go from green to purple, right? So whatever this is, this is your resolution. This is a resolution. This similarly, this is because it's a one-to-one -one mapping. So, so there, so there, be, so there will be a green line here also. Uh, somehow we can't see that. Okay, so there is a green line here also, corresponding to green line there, and similarly, there is a purple line here also, like this, corresponding to these. Okay. Right. So we saw that. Uh, So resolution minimum value that can be measured that is one bit change in LSV which is this so green is corresponding to green here purple is corresponding to purple here right and we know that two raised to the power n minus one steps over here is v max minus v min so one step is v max minus v min or two raised to the power n minus one this is nothing but the resolution you know one step is nothing but the resolution one bit change so resolution turns out to be v max minus v min over two raised to the power n minus one all right okay 
So, but in the in this problem, we are not given Vmax and Vmin. So, I'll write the formula for resolution. Vmax minus Vmin, root square n minus 1. So, what is this value? This value is nothing, but you are given here, full scale input. Full scale input is nothing but Vmax minus Vmin. This is 10, 2 raised to the power n minus 1. Right, resolution is given. So, resolution, this value has to be, let me do it like this. This has to be greater than 5 millivolts given in the problem. So, I can write it 10 divided by 2 raised to the power n minus 1 should be greater than 5 millivolts. This will give me 2 raised to the power n minus 1 should be less than, so this is 10 by 2, 2000. We just see if I have done this correctly. 10 by 2 uh, is 5, uh, sorry, 10 by 5 is 2 and 1000, yeah, 2000. So, 2 raised to the power n should be less than 2001. So, n should be less than log to the base 2 of 2001, right? Okay. So, uh, so what is that? Let me just see. Minimum resolution required is 5 millivolts. So, we take it to that side. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, minimum resolution required is 5 millivolts. This means the sign is not less than, but okay. So, so the lower the resolution, the better it is. Okay. So here the minimum resolution that requires 5 millivolts. Even if the resolution is lower, we are fine with that. Okay. This is a numerical number. So this has to be less than 5 millivolts. Even if it's 10 or 15 or 20, we are good. Hence this sign here. So, so whatever this value comes, it has to be at least equal to 5 millivolts or less than, less than equal to. Okay. So it will be 10 to raise to the power n minus 1 should be less than equal to 5 millivolts. Okay. Even if it's lower, it's fine. Okay. Um, so, if you solve this, 2 raised to the power n minus 1 should be greater than or equal to 2000. 2 raised to the power n should be greater than or equal to 2001. And n should be greater than or equal to log to the base 2, 2001. Okay, let's see what this turns out to be. Log 1001 divided by log 2. So, 10.96. n should be greater than or equal to 10.97 now n can be an n can only be an integer this means the minimum value of n implies n should be greater than or equal to 11 n should be greater than or equal to 1 so we need minimum number of bits so even if it's 12 we are fine the question says minimum it has to be 11 it cannot be 10 okay if you make it equal to 10 right so let's just calculate this value for let's say resolution for resolution 10 it will be 10 divided by 2 raised to the power 10 minus 1 this turn out to be 10 divided by 1023 okay so 10 divided by 102 uh, sorry 10 divided by 1023 is uh, is 9.8 millivolts we require how much 5 millivolts or lower is higher hence this is not acceptable so this is so this is corresponding to n equal to 10 which is not acceptable for us hence n should be equal to 11 or greater the answer is C. Key thing here is that you just need to remember this is the resolution and how did we obtain? We obtained it from this, this analysis. Okay. Now, uh, so just like in digital to analog converters, we had seen that there are different flavors. So the, we saw weighted resistors, we said R, we, we saw R to our ladder network. Similarly, for uh, for analog to digital converters also, there are different flavors that uh, that are available for us depending on the functionality, depending on our applications as always. So that how fast you want um, and how much space in the sense that uh, because these are all fabricated on an integrated chip or or, or just, you can assume it's, it's, it's on silicon wafer. So they, so they take some space, real physical space. So so the number, the, the larger the number of, uh, let's say, components, the more space it will take and thus it will be costly. So depending on the depending on the usage, depending on the application, there are different flavors of uh, of analog to digital converters that are available for us. Okay, so so the the, the analysis that we saw when we when when I was talking about uh, resolution, right? There, that was a very generic discussion in the sense that we were just talking about how is and how does a uh, how does a how does a, a, a general A to A 
he ADC works. What's its resolution? Now we'll see that how is it actually implemented. Okay, so so the first uh, so in this problem it talks about flash type ADC. Flash type ADC. Okay, so we'll read the problem later. Let's just first try to understand what a flash type ADC is. Uh, just give me a moment. Yeah. So what is a flash type ADC? Okay. Uh, so uh, as we see in analog to digital conversion, what we have is analog input digital output is an example of a three bit ADC. And we saw that we require these references, right? These references, these are the corresponding levels. These are actual some, some values, the units of voltage, right? And we compare this given input analog voltage to these levels. And then we put it to one of the bins. Let's go to 000 bin, 011 bin, 101 bin, and so on, right? So we compare VA prime to these levels, right? I'm using the word compare and there is an electronic device which which we can use to compare, which is a comparator, which is used using op-amps. Okay. So again, this is just a, this is a previous diagram, just, just uh, color coded. So we have a Vmax and analog maximum voltage that we are required to, we are required to map. There's also minimum voltage in between them. We had so many references. Remember, we saw VREF1 to VREF7 in, in our previous example. See, VREF1 to VREF7. Similarly, for a general one would have VREF1, first reference, all the way to 2 to the power n minus 1 references. Okay, I'm now generalizing it. And for to compare with this, so first we need to generate all these references. Correct? And secondly, we need to compare the incoming analog voltage to these different voltages. Okay, so there are two tasks. I'll write it here. So, um, how should I write it? So, there are two tasks. Tasks. First, generate different VREF. And second task. compare incoming analog voltage to the obtained VREFs. Okay, so first uh, compare with. Okay, so first we'll generate these reference voltages and then we'll compare, so two tasks. So first task is uh, just focus on. So first task is here. You see this 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 complete structure. So here we have some VREF high voltage. Let's say 10 volts, 15 volts, whatever it is. And there is a low voltage. Let's say it's ground. So you can see this is a potential divider, right? So and you can see these different reference voltages. So what we have done essentially is that we have generated all these VREF two raised to the power n minus one to VREF one using just this potential divider on the left. So on this side is your task one. Okay, generate different VREF that we did over here using a potential divider. Okay, secondly, the second task was to compare the incoming analog voltage with the obtained VREFs. So this is the incoming voltage. And this has to be compared to VREF. So this is the VREF. How do we compare using an op amp? You know, if, if the if the if for non-inverting terminal, if that is higher, the output will be high, correct? So, so there's 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 other some circuitry involved, some sequential circuits and some combinational circuits. We are not worried about that right now. We just need to understand these two basic tasks. So first, we generated all the reference reference voltage, and secondly, the, all the reference voltages are compared to the incoming one. So, so this is the comparator to the power n minus one. This is the first comparator, which is comparing VREF one with the incoming voltage. So this voltage is this and V in are compared for by this comparator, okay. And the good thing about it is that that all this is happening in parallel. You see, everything is in parallel. So this is very fast. Flash, flash means usually means which happens very quickly, right? So this is uh, so this circuit is uh, is is very fast in that sense. But as you can see, it requires two to per n minus one comparators, okay, for an n bit. Um, for an n bit output so here is 2 to the power n to 1 
thermometer to binary encoder so why thermometer because thermometer as as we as i had told you gives us a uh, analog analog signal right uh, like for instance in summer the temperature is 39.8 degrees celsius 44.2 degrees celsius and so on it's an analog value we want to store in some digital format so that is what it does but uh, the key thing to hear is that first we generate the references second we compare the incoming uh, uh, the, the given analog value with all these references in parallel okay which for this these comparators are used okay that's flash adc now let's come back to the problem so the number of comparators can be accommodated on a single chip with specific ic technology 600 i told you so these comparators they they are again comparators nothing but opam and if you recall earlier opam is, is a special type of a differential amplifier which uses which uses uh, a mosfets or bjts whichever it is we we saw example of bjt so uh, it can use mosfet also so what it means is that it actually takes some physical space on your on your on your chip on your integrated uh, chip right so it says that the maximum comparators can be 600 so i'll write this maximum number of comparators is nothing but 600 okay we know that for n bit flash adc 2 raised to the power n minus 1 comparators are required we saw this analysis right okay so uh, so what this would mean is that uh, we can say that so 2 raised to the power n minus 1 right okay uh, let me do it in different way okay so the question is what is the maximum number of bits possible for a flash type adc made using this technology this means the maximum number of comparators available to us is only 600 all right so so n bit flash adc is requires 2 raised to the power n minus 1 comparators okay so so the one option is that you can directly put the option so um, so let's say if we check option 8 right for 8 bit adc you require 2 raised to the power 8 minus 1 that is At which part it is? Eight is four is three is sorry. Eight uh, is two fifty six. So two fifty six comparators, which will work because we have six hundred, right? For nine bit ADC, we require two raised to the power nine minus one. It's two fifty five. Sorry, two fifty nine minus one. It will require five eleven comparators. This will also work. Nine bit will work because we have six hundred available. These are required. For ten bit. We require two raised to the power ten minus one. That is one zero two three comparators. And similarly for uh, sorry for eleven bit, you will require two raised to the power eleven minus one. That is uh, that's two zero four eight. So two zero four seven comparators. But remember, we have only six hundred available. So this will be satisfied. This will be satisfied. This these can never be satisfied. So remember, higher the number of bits, we saw the better is the resolution, right? But there is a trade-off. If you increase the number of bits, we require more comparators. And in this technology, we have only six hundred available. So if only six hundred available, you can make eight bit ADC. You can make nine bit flash ADC, but you cannot make ten bit or eleven bit or twelve bit. Okay. So twelve bit again ADC will require to register part twelve minus one. So that's four zero nine five comparators. Okay, but we only have six hundred, so we cannot make twelve. We cannot make ten. We can make eight or nine, right? But we are required to find the maximum number of bits. Nine is the maximum that we can achieve. We can also do eight, but in order to maximize it, we can only go up to nine bits. Okay, so that's how we did here. Uh, in this problem, uh, just to summarize, uh, we had just first. Uh, we have just first seen that how uh, an actual uh, how how is not uh, how is flash adc was a working principle for that right so we saw that we require uh, we require some references and then we require to compare to those references right 
so we saw these we operated we uh, obtained these references using um, these uh, potential dividers and here is task 2 here is task 2 okay so and finally we just saw that, uh, that there are two n minus 1 comparators for n bit output and we obtained this using uh, option elimination or whatever method you want to call it okay so now let's move forward uh, right so in this says uh, so that i told you uh, this is a question based on first of all successive approximation type edc okay so again um, we'll first see what is this successive approximation type we have seen the general edc and then also we had seen um, the first type that is flash edc okay now we'll see successive approximation type edc how it works and then we'll come back to the problem okay so what happens sorry okay so what happens is that uh, in this again the same the two things will remain constant remember that uh, in in that the first task was vref second was comparison right we need to generate certain vrefs and we and then we need to compare so in the previous for flash edc we have generated different vrefs and then for each vref we had a comparator right in this it's a bit different right we only will only have one comparator so that will save us some space okay but we cannot have multiple vrefs so that means we cannot do the parallel processing so that's a trade off either you can do parallel processing right or you can uh, or you can save space you cannot do both so in the previous example for flash edc we saw parallel processing so it's faster but it takes more space so save approximation takes lesser space but is slower okay so we'll see that so so we'll see how what's the working principle for this so for this we have let's say so this is a dac we have seen dacs today so there's a reference and there is a ground and you see so th so these are the digital uh, inputs and it's then output is coming which is the output is uh, an analog value of v naught dac so in this case this is a 5 bit dac okay so first how what i'll do is that i want to plot okay I want to plot uh, so this is the plot of uh, uh, and let's say this is uh, 0 okay so this is with respect to time let's say x axis is time this is voltage and let's say uh, I want to uh, so so re remember we also had the the swing for DAC it has a minimum value corresponding and output so let's say this DAC can give an output of 0 to 31 volts okay I've, I've, we have to choose specific values of VR R and RF but let's say it outputs 0 to 31 volts okay this DAC and let's say the value of VA that I want to compare is uh, for instance let's say is 27.5 volts I'm just I'm just trying to establish that how it's a working principle okay so the so this is the input voltage and I want to store in digital format right with the comparator and this is the output so first what we do is that we'll say the, the input that we are providing is so so in the first step what we say is that so the first clock cycle okay let's say till here what we do is that we provide input as 1 0 0 0 0 5 bits okay so 1 0 0 0 0 this will correspond to if you calculate this will correspond to 16 volts okay this will correspond to the output voltage now which i will draw so first uh, let's let's draw the the va okay so this is your va this is VA equal to 27.5 volts and this is the V naught DAC on the Y axis we have on the Y axis we have V naught DAC on this axis okay so up until this first clock time okay when the input is 10000 right so output is 16 volts so 16 volts is let's say somewhere here this is 16 volts right so what's going to happen now is 16 volts will be compared 27.5 right and 27.5 is larger than 16 so comparator value should be 1 so this will 
give us c equal to 1. Correct? If c equal to 1, we don't change the value of d4. So in this case, what we had done, actually there was one more step before. It was 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. And there the input was 0. That was before time t equal to 0. So you can see that. You can, you can just assume for the sake of completion. Something like this. Then we switched from d4, the MSP, from 0 to 1. And finally, once we obtain V0 DAC, so V0 DAC is 16 volts, we compare 16 to 27.5. 16 is less, so this means negative terminal is showing, uh, seeing a lesser voltage, so output will be 1. C will be 1, which I write here. If C equal to 1, you do, we, we leave, we do not touch the value of D4. What we do is that, now we'll go to the next, we'll, we'll, we'll flip the next bit to 1. So now the input will be 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So when it's 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. What is V0 DAC? In that case, V0 DAC will come out to be 16 plus 824. That's why I took 0 to 31. So that this calculation becomes easier. So what will happen is that this will become 24. 24 will be somewhere over here, this value. Okay. So output V0 DAC will become now 24 volts like this. And this is the second time period. And again, 24, we compare 24, this is 27.5. This is still larger. So again, C will be equal to 1. Again, we will not change the value of D3. Okay. Now what we will do, we will flip the next bit. So it will be 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 16 plus 8, 24 plus 28. So it will become 28. Something like this for third clock cycle. Okay, now this value becomes 28. This is 27.5. So negative terminal is at a higher voltage. This means comparator now will give low. Now output will be go to minus Vsat and I'm denoting it as low. So C equal to 0. If C equal to 0, what we do is flip, flip. So what was it? Here D3, D4 was flip, D3, D2. So flip D2. So this means now it will become 1 1 0 0 0 again. Okay. This implies it will become 1 1 0 0 0. Okay. So this change will not stand then. This is 28 volts. Okay. Now for the next cycle, now note that it is 1 1 0 0 0. Okay. And now we flip this bit. So in this we flip D4, then D3, then D2. Now we flip D, D, D1 to 1. So we want to flip D1 to 1. This means that this will become 1 okay and now note that we brought it down to 24 right remember that this was again 24 here please please note that because you flipped it back okay like here you see this is 0 again so 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 16 plus 8 24 plus 2 26 so it will come down to 26 okay it will come down to 26 so uh, this just a second. This was 16. So this was 24. This will come down to 26. This will come down to somewhere here. 26 volts. Okay. Now what we will do is we will again compare. So 26 volts with 27.5. It is lower. You can see that. 27.5 is higher. This means C will become 1. So no need to flip now. Okay, so 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 D1 will remain as it is, and finally what we'll see is that we'll now flip the LSB. So one one zero one one. So one one zero one one. If you see it, it will come out to be sixteen twenty four twenty six twenty seven volts. So twenty seven volts will be here. This is twenty seven volts, and like this. And again you compare twenty seven to twenty seven point five. That's twenty seven here. Twenty seven point five here. C will become. Uh, so positive has a higher voltage so c will become one comparator will give one output which means it's higher remember it's actually it gives plus or v plus v set minus v set i have it uh, I'm, I'm denoting higher by one so it will become comparator will come if comparator is one we don't need to flip d2 uh, sorry d0 in this case so whatever the value then you get this finally here that is your out that is your final answer so final answer for this is one one zero one one so 27.5 will correspond to 11011 and you see this kind of uh, this fluctuation this is how successive why its name successive approximation is that 
first we are approximating the msb21 right then the next bit then the next bit then the next bit and then the next bit and we are doing a hit and trial essentially okay we, so this is a way of this is a way to try to find out the the final uh, the the digital output corresponding to a given input okay and again we again you notice is that the vrefs that we have these are the reference voltages so we are again finding vrefs but we are finding in another clock cycle this is first clock cycle first period second period third period fourth period fifth period okay so if you, if you see that how many periods are required five periods were required correct and we'll see i uh, will see a bit in more detail that would mean by that so five periods were required to finally arrive at the answer is for a five bit dac for a six bit dac there will be six periods and so on okay so this was the schematic that we had but there 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 are many more components uh, I, I request you to refer to the uh, lecture notes for that there are there are many more components uh, for this for this uh, simple looking dac so for instance you have a sample and hold uh, uh, block here so so forget about sample and hold so this is the input that is coming and you can see this input is being compared to the v0 dac which is the diagram over here v0 dac is coming as the output of 5 bit dac which is the if we generalize it it's an n bit dac that we see over here and so and what are these d's so these are stored in this which is this this is a register so someone must be storing it right remember we started from 1 0 0 0 0 and then we flipped in the next clock cycle to 1 1 0 0 0 so, so where is that clock cycle and everything is coming so that everything is stored in this register for 5 bits so those 5 bits are stored here d for d4 to d0 is stored somewhere here so so, so you can say it in that d0 d1 and dn minus 1 right because it's an sorry 2 raised to the power n minus 1 so they are stored over here right and every clock cycle we we, we see that for every clock cycle we'll flip the next uh, next uh, uh, next uh, less significant bit right so for for uh, we, for five bit dac we require we saw that we required five clock pulses so that is the clock you see over here so that flipping whatever is happening so there is one more circuitry that is one it's not shown here because that is what will cause the flipping i told you right if if, if, if c comes out to be zero you don't flip and so on sorry you flip back to zero so th there is an additional circuitry that is here actually so there is some additional circuitry that is here which is being fed to this this is the control logic block so what does this control logic do c equal to 0 flip d to 0 if c equal to 1 no change required and there is a for loop running throughout correct because every bit we shift 1 so this is running in a for loop for i equal to 0 to 2 raised to the power n minus 1 and for that we get di equal to 1 so that so there is all essentially what i'm saying is, is this is the this is all this is re residing in the control logic but th that's that's not of uh, uh, what we have explained in terms of uh, in not in mathematical terms or algorithm terms but this is what control logic is doing okay so coming back to our problem so this is a 10 bit successive approximation type adc so we are given n equal to 10 okay and clock frequency is 1 megahertz what is the conversion time so you, we see that conversion time is how much n times t clock remember for 5 bit we saw it only in the fifth when all the d's are flipped right from 0 to 1 right then only the the process is complete then only the the conversion of an analog input to digital output is complete right so hence n times t clock okay so n times t clock n in this case is 10 t clock is nothing but 1 over f clock time period is nothing but 1 over frequency so 10 times so 1 over 10 to the power 6 so this is microseconds 10 to the power 6 is micro so 10 microseconds so which happens to be option a option c sorry for this problem the answer, correct answer is c 10 microseconds if let's say for the sake of discussion if this if this were implemented using flash okay remember we need more comparators for flash okay 
for flash t conversion would be nothing but one times t clock remember we have seen that everything happens in parallel so in that case it would be 1 over f clock that is 10 uh, sorry not 10 but 1 microseconds that would be 1 microseconds for flash right but it will require how many uh, we saw 2 raised to the power n minus 1 converter so that will require 1 0 2 3 comparators here it's 10 microsecond and one comparator so you see there's a trade-off it's faster but requires more space more devices it's slower but it requires less space so that depends on as, as I told earlier also it depends on your application right okay so just to summarize in this problem we saw successive approximation type ADC and this is how it operated so you first start with 0 0 0 0 0 then you flip the MSB to 1 you obtain the V naught DAC compare it with the, with the given analog value which is 27.5 since 27.5 is larger this will uh, the output of this uh, op-amp will switch to plus Vsat which I am denoting as C equal to 1 okay then we flip the next bit and then it, we obtain it 24, 24 volts Again we compare, we again see this is higher, so C will remain 1. Then we flip the next bit, it comes out to be 28. And we see that 28 volts when compared to 27.5, we can clearly see that uh, the negative terminal is seeing a higher potential. This means the op-amp will now switch to minus Vsat and we denote minus Vsat as C equal to 0. The output is 0. If the output is 0, we flip the bit which we have just flipped. So in this case, we have flipped the third bit, D2 bit. You see? From 0 to 1 d2 was flipped so we flip d2 back to 0 so it becomes 1 1 0 0 0 and for the next clock pulse we again what we do is we flip now we flip d1 to 1 so 1 1 0 1 0 it comes out with 26 less than 27.5 so c remains 1 and finally uh, we flip the lsp 1 1 0 1 1 and then we obtain 27 which is again less than 27.5 so we are fine with that so c will turn out to be 1 again and this is whatever value is stored finally is the output so 1 1 0 1 1 this is just an example by the way and what we see is that this takes 5 clock cycles right so depending on the whatever the number of bits is it takes 5 clock cycles uh, just to be more clear in this example I have, I have chosen the value of vr rf and r such that the output is 0 to 31 volts and all integers that's not always the case just for this just to just to illustrate successive approximation ADC I had done that okay all right so we did that so n times t clock so it turns out to be frequency is given 1 megahertz so time period is 1 microsecond total conversion time comes out to be 10 microseconds and it uses one comparator on the other hand for flash type ADC the conversion time is 1 microseconds it requires only one clock pulse but it, but it will require more than 1000 comparators Okay, so uh, coming back to the uh, next problem that we have is, is now we see a third type of uh, ADC now, which is dual slope ADC. Okay, so let's just first see what, what it means by dual slope ADC. So in this, so this is just, uh, just uh, forget about the left side, uh, just see this R, C and switch, right? This is nothing but an integrator. So, so uh, forget about the switch, switch is open, so it's R and C. So we know that we have seen this circuit for op-amps, this is just an integrator. Uh, v naught equal to minus 1 by RC integration of VI times DT right now what is VI VI can be VA or VR depending on how the switch is being how where the switch is being thrown okay all right so so what we do first of all is that for time t less than 0 we, we close the switch just at this time if we close the switch you know this is a short so V naught will be equal to 0 remember this is a virtual ground so V naught will become 0 so we are at this point okay now we open the switch at t at just after t equal to 0 so this is now in, not in the picture anymore and now what we do first is that we have thrown the switch here so this is this switch is here for time up to t equal to t1 t less than 0 to t1 the switch is here and the switch is here from t1 less than t to t2 so let's just first, first consider when the switch is here so VI is nothing but VA. So if you put the value here, so V0 will come out to be, so case 1, V0 will turn out to be minus 1 by RC VA 
dt va we are assuming to be a positive quantity so it turn out to be and constant so it will turn out to be va times t so initial value is 0 to some value t this is how it will look like with a negative slope you can see like this and uh, we assume that it will run up to time t1 what that time is we will see later how we will obtain this time let's assume it runs up to time t1 so v0 max we will obtain va by rc times t1 right because that is where we want to stop or you can see that the limit is 0 to t1 okay that's so 0 to t1 fine this is the v0 that we will obtain this point which we are calling here as which i am calling here is v1 okay this is v1 now case 2 case 2 is from when time is from t1 to t2 so from t1 to t2 the switch will be here right and vi will be equal to vr same expression will still stand so v0 minus 1 by rc t1 to t2 but this time the expression is vr dt correct and here also it will be from t1 to some t2 so it will be v0 at t1 sorry v0 at t2 minus v0 at t1 should be equal to minus 1 by rc uh, and uh, i'm assuming vr to be negative okay uh, we, we saw earlier vr was minus 5 or something right so it will turn out to be vr times t2 minus t1 and what is i'm defining the time t2 as a time when v output will become zero you can see here right so v not t2 will become zero so it will be zero minus v not at time t1 minus 1 by rc times vr t2 minus t okay uh, let me just see if i've done this correctly so limit will be from okay so this time will be actually t1 plus t2 because you see this is t1 and this is t1 plus t2 here right so this will be t1 plus t2 minus t1 so it finally will only come out to be times t2 okay so what is v0 t1 is nothing but v1 so this implies if you compare these two if you compare these two you will get minus va by rc times t1 will be nothing but minus vr by rc times t2 right and i am assuming that i am i can somehow measure t1 and t2 okay if i measure t1 if i measure t2 we i have already i'll already know a fixed value of vr rc and rc get cancelled right so you can see that i can i can directly obtain there's a minus sign also okay so it's minus va t1 but this is uh, sorry v0 t1 is yeah so there is a yeah so there is a plus sign here okay so you can see that that va v i can obtain va which will be minus t2 by t1 times vr very simple mathematical expression t2 we can obtain somehow we have to find out how t1 somehow we have to find out how vr is a given voltage right this can be obtained this can be solved the only problem is how to find t2 and t1 and we and we, and we use them by using counters we have seen the previous class session that we can use counters to to move forward in time okay that's what's happening here so so this is the you see this is the this part the spdt uh, single pole double throw switch and this is the say integrator circuit and this is the, this, this is the logic that i have that we are seeing here now the comparator the clock and the n bit counter so first we know is that we set the initially counter we set to zero okay we set to zero and you see it's it's integrate so the and va is positive this v naught will then turn out to be negative we have seen the values right this turns out to be negative this means this output will be high this output will be high this is a clock so clock will get passed here and for every clock cycle this counter will keep on getting updated 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 at some point of time counter will become all ones remember initially zero 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 it will become all one 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 and when that happens the overflow will become one an overflow will become one the switch will now get thrown from a to b okay this means at this point at this point overflow will become equal to one 
बिकॉज काउंटर इक्वल टू वन 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 ऑल वंस दैट्स कॉल्ड एन ओवरफ्लो कंडीशन जस्ट वंस वन क्लॉक साइकिल आफ्टर दैट सो इट बिकम ऑल वंस यू एड प्लस वन इट विल बिकम ऑल जीरोज ओके सो वन दैट हैपन्स सो वील गो टू वी आर राइट स्विच विल बी थ्रोन टू वी आर and then we see that it will turn out to be a, a, again a negative number right it will still be a negative number you see v out is still a negative number but it will keep on increasing 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 and again uh, it will again for any clock cycle this counter will now again start updating from zero because remember when overflow happened counter became 00000 so actually i should make it more clear so this is when overflow equal to 1 that is counter had to go from all ones to all zeros so effectively counter also got reset right so switch got thrown here so now what what happens is that now it's counting t2 what is t1 t1 is nothing but the maximum you have n bit counter so maximum you count is 2 raised to the power n Every clock cycle you are counting. Every clock cycle is updating, so it's updating to the two raised to the power n times. So t1 will be two raised to the power n tc, and t2 will be whatever the value is stored in this n bit counter. And that's how you uh, you operationalize a dual slope ADC, and the name is clear. Why dual slope? Because you have a negative slope and a positive slope. Just to be clear, vr is a negative number, va is a positive number. Okay, so that's how this is implemented. Okay, so so. Consider an n-bit dual slope ADC. So n is equal to eight, right? N equal to eight, and t clock is one millisecond. So which clock are we talking about here? You see this clock. This time period is one millisecond. Okay. What is the worst case conversion time? So, so conversion time. I'll write it here. Conversion time. This means when the whole process is complete. The process is complete at this point. Right? Then only with this counter will stop. This counter will take conversion time is t1 plus t2. t1 is 2 raised to the power n times tc. What is t2? t2 in the worst case scenario, t2 can. This means the counter will again will become full. It will again overflow. Right? That's the worst case scenario. It cannot go higher than that. So t2 worst case scenario can be 2 raised to the power n times tc. Just to be clear, 2 raised to the power n comes before the counter has counted from zero. 2 raised to the power n minus 1. So it has run 2 raised to the power n clock cycles as this. And t2 similarly can go again. It will count from 0, 0 to 1 all ones. That will again take 2 raised to the power n clock cycles, which is this. So I, we can write it as 2 raised to the power n plus 1 times tc. So n is 8. So 8 plus 1 times 1 millisecond. 2 raised to the power 9 millisecond, which is 512 millisecond. Option B. Okay. So, uh, so tenth is B. Yeah, tenth is B. Correct. So, what we did here in this problem, we first see how does how is an uh, how does an ADC operate, which we saw over here. This is essentially nothing but an integrator. Okay. For the first part, when it's connected to VA, which is the value we want to measure, we obtain we we obtain this negative slope. We we reach till some value V minus V one, and then we we throw the switch to VR by some mechanism. Right, we are in some negative reference value, and then we get this positive slope, and we stop when we reach zero. Okay, how we implement this is using this 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 an AND gate with a clock. It's a comparator output. Okay, so you can see that when when it reaches positive, so what why does it stop at zero? The question arises because if now V naught will become positive, this means V naught becomes positive, this becomes higher. The negative terminal will become higher. This means a comparator will become zero. And then the clock will not go in the counter, and the counter will simply got frozen at whatever the value is. Hence, T two will measure, T two will measure the, those many clock cycles in which for this slope, for the positive slope, and this is running the full two raised to the power n. Uh, this we we run it till the negative slope runs till the overflow condition. Okay, that's what we denoted by this point. So the conversion time is t1 plus t2. T1 is always 2 to the power n times tc. T2 worst case can be 2 to the power n into tc. Best case it can be only one clock cycle. So we put in the values and we get 512 milliseconds.
okay so this is a i mean if you if you see the uh, lecture notes from professor patel in the lecture he had talked about so digital uh, in a digital multimeter and these are some handheld devices so you can see that in that okay one more thing i should point out is that usually these are very these are very popular especially for uh, when you want to measure some uh, because what happens is that usually there is always some noise associated with the analog signal right but when you integrate a noise so noise is positive and negative fluctuation random fluctuations its value gets minimized when you integrate because plus and minus will get uh, integration is nothing but a, an addition right so if we add positive and negative so it will so the value will reduce rather than being amplified hence dual slope adcs are good in that sense so in, in digital voltmeter also we use a dual slope integrating type adcs so voltmeter essentially you want to measure the voltage and you want to store it that's that's what the digital denotes so voltmeter is usually will measure in some analog value if you want to store it digitally we use a digital voltmeter and it can and usually it involves a dual slope integrating type because it reduces the noise to to much to to greater degree as compared to the other ones voltage to frequency type is uh, actually dual slope integrating type is a subset of voltage to frequency type okay so i should say that this is the most correct option okay so now coming back to the final problem uh, for the day so in this problem we have given a, a stable multi vibrator circuit what is the oscillation frequency so um, uh, what i understand is that uh, um, uh, th we have to look at a bit what a, a stable multi vibrator is first of all okay so uh, what i'm denoting here is a very simplistic uh, diagram so you see here we have given just a black box right here so there are multiple ways of implementing it so but, but, but first just i want to put across the the principle of a stable multi vibrator so stable means it's not stable it will keep on oscillating it's like schmidt trigger you remember it keeps on oscillating so this is similar principle is here right so what we have is that in this case very simplistic diagram we just have two uh, np and bcts and four resistors and you see the, this is the way okay this is crossing this is not shorted okay this crosses like this okay so um so so let's let's see how it operates so this is a circuit diagram rather this is the two outputs that we are taking so so what happens is that if this output is like this this output will be like this so they're complementary of each other okay so in the first case uh, let, let's let's just see what happens when uh, so it, so what's happening essentially is that one of the bjts will be in saturation the second will be in cut off so in this case just to start uh, we assume this to be saturated this to be cut off Okay, if this is saturated, then you know this this node is at 0.7 volts, right? VBE. Okay, and we'll assume that VCE is very small. Okay, so this node is is essentially approximately at zero volts. Okay, so this potential is zero. This is 0.65. Okay, and initially we have assumed the capacitors are uncharged. So what's going to happen is that now you see, so you see this pathway, correct? So this capacitor, no current can go here. This is in cut off VB VC, so no current is going here. So there is no current flowing here, no current flowing here, and no current flowing here. Okay. So what's going to happen is that so this capacitor will get charged in this manner, in this manner. Okay. And this capacitor will keep on getting charged. So initially I told you it was uncharged, right? And this is sitting at zero. What's going to happen? The the potential for this node will keep on rising. 0.1 volts, 0.2 volts, 0.3 volts. What what's going to happen is that suddenly when it crosses 0.7 volts, this can start conducting because this now VBE will become forward bias, right? Which is shown here, right? So this is getting charged, and just as soon as it reaches 0 0.75, 0 0.7 volts, now this will start getting charged, and and the situation will flip. Now what will happen as this will become now zero, right? Which is denoted by this output will suddenly become zero. Because um, we are neglecting VCE essentially, this will become zero. This will become point seven, right? What's going to happen now is that again, in this way, no current can flow here. So this is in cut off. Similarly, um, yeah, no current can flow here. Okay. So what's going to happen now? This capacitor will start getting charged because there's a pathway of current flowing from here, from this side to this side. Now this was uncharged earlier as as before, and now what's going to happen is that now this potential will start will start to rise. This is zero again. Remember, this output node is at sitting at zero as soon as this started conducting. This is a zero. Now this will this will start getting charged. So point one, point seven, point two. As soon as it reaches point seven, this will again start conducting. This will get shut off, cut off, right? And we'll again we'll again but get back to this. What's going to happen is that this is the thing that you will see, right? So this first time in this Q two is cut off. This is what we saw, right? Q two is cut off means Q two was higher. 
right? Q2 was I, Q2 was VCC over here. These times, you can see that at this, how are these time constants being determined? This rise, uh, these rise, these constants, these are being determined by these. So this is the charging time, so R1 times C2, written here. And this time, the low time here in output 2 is determined by R3 times C2, which is determined here. So that's that's the working principle of a stable multivibrator, right? As I told you, there are different flavors. I have just introduced to the, to the, to the very generic working of it. Okay. So, and this is uh, this is how, this is an any 555 a stable multivibrator. So the, in this problem, actually, this is being implemented. Okay. So because if, if you recall at the circuit, you see there is a there's a there's a, there's a power supply here and there's a ground so you see uh, a power supply here and a ground here and r1 r2 and c okay so but the, the principle i just introduced the principle of a stable multivibrator so so this is how it's going to operate and so in this now we are required to find the output frequency okay so let's go back here so what is so what is the so what is the uh, excuse me so what is the time period here so it will be t1 plus t2 let's denote this is t1 and this is t2 so it will be t1 will be r2 c1 plus r3 c2 usually we keep r2 and r3 same and c1 and c2 same so effectively this comes out to be 2 rc all right so so that's that's the total time so in this however in this problem in this problem that we see here t1 so i'll write it uh, i'll write it here so t high so again the output is something like this it properly so this is t high this is t low so t high the expression for t high is um, if i remember correctly is r a plus r b times c ln 2 and t low is R V times C L N2. So total time period is T H plus T L will be R A plus 2 R B times C L N2. So let's just put the values and just calculate the answer. So that's 12 plus 8.2 plus 8.2 times 10 nanofarad times L N2 that comes out to be 196.85 units will be k times nano microseconds so frequency is nothing but 1 over t this turns out to be 10 to the power 6 over 196.85 so that is coming out to be 5.080 kilohertz uh, one decimal place so 5.1 kilohertz this is option a over here so so that is uh, so that is all for this uh, that is all for uh, this uh, stable multivibrator so so we i had just talked about uh, a very simple working principle based on bjt so but this is a for using 555 timers there are, there are more because as a circuit changes the time constants may also change so that's what's happening here the working principle remains the same more or less Okay, uh, so that's it. Uh, that's it for today, and that's it for uh, basic electronics course NOC twenty three E sixty two. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Good night.